Over the years, there have been so many amazing Minecraft mods that have come and gone. All-time greats like Biomes of Plenty or Mo Creatures, or ones that have continued even after all this time, and ones that have been discontinued and maybe even forgotten about. Today, I want to look at some of the most underrated old Minecraft mods from the early days. These mods may not have been the most famous or in the spotlight at the time, but strike a chord in a lot of people's memories, and the point is to find ones that you may have forgotten about. Okay, Mojang, don't kill me for this first one because we know how you feel about this nowadays. The first one on the list is SDK's Gun Mod, originally being released all the way back for Alpha 1.2.6. I was only able to find the beta version of the mod, but there are a few videos showcasing what it looked like in Alpha, which is kind of a wild trip to watch. As the name obviously suggests, SDK's Gun Mod added a ton of different firearms and other weapons to Minecraft, from rifles to flamethrowers throwers to grenades. This was extremely different from vanilla, and the textures of the icons looked so out of place and goofy in the blocky world. But I won't lie, the mod is fun, even to this day. Considering the only ranged weapon back then was a primitive bow and arrow, it was so fun to mess around with, especially fighting hordes of hostile mobs at night, or using the explosive weapons to mess up the terrain. SDK, or Scotty Does Know, stopped updating the mod in official release 1.3 but will forever live as a very nostalgic memory for many. And on the theme of explosions and blowing things up, the original Nuke mod from Beta 1.8. There have been many, many iterations of nukes added to Minecraft, as humans have a fascination with the most destruction as humanly possible. However, Minecraft being a tiny game coded in Java struggled to handle that many block updates at once early on, so it was a very finicky time to add huge explosions. I mean, it still does struggle, but even more so in Beta. Anyway, the nuke mod was extremely simple. It just added a block that was like a thousand times stronger than TNT. Using it would result in huge craters left in your world. Perfect for quickly making a bomb site or meteor site for an adventure map, for example, looking for ores quickly, or just adding a wasteland type area to your world. Now you may be thinking, Ryan, what about the TNT mod? That adds so many more explosions and explosive blocks to the game, including nukes. Thought about adding that one, but it was incredibly popular, so to fit the theme of underrated forgotten mods, I went with the simple option. And speaking of going with the lesser option, this next one sadly came and went, like a fleeting Hallmark movie romance. The Moon mod, featured by the Yogg's cast. This one honestly inspired this whole video, as I remember watching the Moon mod video in 2011 when it came out and being so entertained and awestruck. When you think of Moon mods, you probably think of the original Galactic Craft, which was the huge one at the time, and came out a little after this Moon mod, which completely overshadowed and arguably killed it. But this one was thrust into popularity by Lewis and Simon making this video about it. The mod is a bit whimsical and goofy as to get to the moon instead of a rocket ship you have to build a portal out of cheese blocks which Simon got a huge kick out of. The moon itself wasn't super interesting just a dark hunk of gravel and stone with lowered gravity. You could see the blocky earth in the sky which was pretty cool. There were also little aliens running around and Simon thought that that was the funniest thing in the world. But other than that the mod didn't offer much at the time but had huge promises to be continued and worked upon and added to, and being that it was the first of its kind, featuring a different planet entirely, it was exciting. However, unfortunately, the creator stopped working on it after this video came out and never updated it again. Then, as I said, Galactic Craft came out, and this mod was lost to time. Sad, but nostalgic nevertheless. The next mod is one of my favorites of all time, and definitely deserves an entire video dedicated to it, but I'll briefly talk about it on this list. To sum it up, Better Than Wolves was a mod created originally for Beta 1.4, which was the Wolf update, that completely overhauled vanilla Minecraft and took it into a different direction. Now, I've covered a lot of modern quote-unquote parallel timeline mods on my channel, or mods that are designed to imagine an alternate path of Minecraft development, and this one, Better Than Wolves is the one that started that entire genre. From windmills to water wheels to pulleys and other machines to utility items like cauldrons, cement, and detector blocks. It not only adds and tweaks blocks and items, but adds completely new rules and challenging survival mechanics to enrich the game experience and not give the player any hand-holding at all. Like for example, movement speed being slowed on sand and faster on stone to encourage path building, or not being able to create water source blocks 
blocks by moving water with buckets. The story is kind of hilarious too. The developer, Flower Child, hated the addition of the Minecraft wolf so much that they created an entire overhaul of Minecraft designed for the quote, serious player and like-minded individuals. I will probably make an extended video someday as a sort of retrospective for this mod as it could be an over an hour long to tell the full story and cover all of the mechanics and items. But if you've ever wanted to try an entirely different Minecraft beta experience and haven't touched better than wolves, it's definitely one to get under your belt. It was incredibly ahead of its time, like unbelievably so. Now of course, everyone remembers Mo Creatures, the all-time famous old Minecraft mod that added dozens of new passive and hostile mobs to the game. You couldn't really play Minecraft back then and not know about it, it was all over the place. However, at the same time, there was another mob edition mod that was heavily overshadowed by Mo Creatures. This is More Creeps and Weirdos, a very whimsical and strange take on new mobs, adding things like a killer letter G, two rival robots that talk about each other, angry Angry lawyers and a blorp, which I don't really know how to describe. So while Mo Creatures was a more serious way to fit the theme of Minecraft, Creeps and Weirdos was just, to sum it all up, odd. Finding weird things all around the world and never knowing when they would be friendly or just decide to ruin your whole day was a weird kind of stress in Minecraft. Now, Creeps and Weirdos was updated all the way through version 1.2.5, but then stopped from the official developer Freak Stritch. However, you can find a revived fan-made version on CurseForge, which was made for version 1.12 and I last updated this year. Now, according to that developer, there is a rumor that Freak Stritch has shown an interest in possibly bringing it back to modern Minecraft, but that remains to be seen. I just want to say now that we're halfway through, if you enjoy nostalgic and old themed Minecraft content and don't know who I am, subscribe for videos just like this and be sure to check out some other stuff on my channel for all the cozy nostalgia feelings. The next mod is one of my favorites, just because you can get lost for hours messing around with it. This is Shapeshifter Z, a mod originally made back in the early Minecraft release days that allows you to transform into any mobs in the game. And not only does it just transform your character's shape and model, it also gives you the abilities of the mob you transform into. For example, being a spider allows you to climb walls, or being a ghast or the ender dragon allows you to fly around, or being an enderman allows you to teleport over long distances. The best part is the full server side version that easily allows you to host the server with Shapeshifter Z. Super fun to mess around with other people on. The mod was unfortunately last updated in version 1.6, meaning you could become a horror and magma cube but never touched after that which is sad considering how many cool mobs modern minecraft now has i mean there's a lot of shape-shifting mods out there even one that lets you do all of the mob abilities like the morph mod but it would have been cool to see the og one stand the test of time this next mod may not really fit the bill of underrated and overshadowed, but I haven't seen it talked about much these days and want to bring it up again for memory's sake. The original flying machine mod, Zeppelin. Covered by huge creators at the time like Yogscast of course and Captain Sparkles, the Zeppelin mod was extremely popular due to the idea of flight in Minecraft at a time that it wasn't even possible, even via creative mode because creative mode didn't exist yet. So yeah, to put it simply, the mod allowed you to build these airships that you can then control super easily to fly around the world. The flying was super smooth and easy to control and provided a way to see the terrain or see your builds from an angle that was never possible before, as well as travel around incredibly quickly. But the best part about Zeppelin was its almost universal compatibility with other mods. This was especially fun with dimensional mods like the Aether or the aforementioned Moon mod as you could build an airship in those dimensions and fly around, or any other number of old mods really, pick one out of a hat and I'd wager Zeppelin would work with it. Now it hasn't been updated since 1.2.5, but it will forever live on in Minecraft modding legend. The next one on the list is a collection of four smaller mods actually, Daft PVF's mods to be exact. There are four mods by Daft PVF, Tree Capitator, Floating Ruins, Crystal Wing, and Starting Inventory. Tree Capitator was very simple, but very cool. It broke trees completely upon breaking the bottom block, similar to felling a tree in real life, making woodcutting not the most tedious chore in the game. Floating Ruins add in, well, Floating Ruins as a generated structure to Minecraft. They generated on these cool 
cool-looking floating islands in the sky and would have specialized designs based on the biome they were in as well as loot and mob spawners. Crystal Wing adds the Crystal Wing item, crafted with an ender pearl, gold ingots, and feathers that gives the ability to instantly teleport you back to your spawn point, whether that means the world spawn or bed location. However, you can only do it seven times until the Crystal Wing is destroyed. That's kind of overpowered considering how decently easy the materials to make it are to acquire, but super cool nevertheless. And lastly, starting inventory allows you to set a, well, custom starting inventory full of any items you choose when creating a world. This is useful for challenges, things like themed maps, or just spicing up the game in any way that you want. These four mods were very simple, but also very popular at the time. Daft PVF didn't make anything else, as far as I know, but these mods laid the groundwork for many similar mod packs, mod extensions, and mod compatibility. Long before you could make baby animals appear by breeding two parent mobs or find them randomly in the wilderness, baby animals did not exist in any capacity in Minecraft. So enter the Baby Animals mod, which was created in Beta 1.7.3. Now, as we know, Notch added animal breeding with baby animals shortly after in the Beta 1.9 pre-releases. So while this mod was ahead of its time by definition, it wasn't for long. It was very simple. It added cute baby variants of every mob in the game that you could find in the world. It just spiced up the diversity of mobs. And did I mention it was cute? Now, it has an interesting story, as when Notch released his own version of baby animals to the official game, the developer, Coco Valley, instead shifted her mod into replacing Notch's baby animals with her own models, as people loved them a lot. I even stumbled upon a debate thread comparing her baby animals with Notch's, and she won by a long shot. Anyway, Coco Valley kept up with Notch's mob updates until version 1.6.4, where the mod was put on hiatus indefinitely and hasn't been touched since. I couldn't find any source on if this is true, but I have a hunch that the baby animals mod inspired Notch in some way to add his own versions into the vanilla game. Last but not least, the Coral Reef mod. After being thrust into the spotlight by the Yogg's cast in 2011, are you noticing a theme of my inspiration? The Coral Reef mod very simply added coral reefs into the oceans, something that didn't come out into the vanilla game until over seven years later in the aquatic update, aka 1.13. It was incredibly colorful and vibrant, adding life to the otherwise dull oceans. And my god, oceans were dull and lifeless for an insane amount of time in the vanilla game. Just squids and dirt and sand and gravel and endless dark water. You could collect different types of coral and some new colorful blocks. What was fun, and what the Yogg's cast did for that video, was combine it with the old scuba diving mod and crystal clear water mod for a really immersive experience, as well as allowing you to breathe underwater. This is just another of the laundry list of examples of a mod that was eventually added into the vanilla game. I've always had this conspiracy theory that Notch and later Moji Jang took huge amounts of inspiration from popular mods, and if you look at it through history, it seems like it could be true. Remember that this video was meant to be some underrated, out of spotlight, and lost to time mods, so if I missed any that you were thinking of, that's likely why. Thanks for watching, let me know in the comments of any other ones that fit the bill, leave a like if you enjoyed, join my discord for updates and to hang out with me, and I'll see you in the next nostalgic video. Special shout out to my channel members on these signs, especially my night members Crimson, Thomas Wellman Boyd, Melon Siggy, Alex LG, Caden TMG, and the AB Rail Fan. And as, al and as always, my beloved Lord members Vapichu, Tor Willem, and Dirty Dan.